Hello everyone, and welcome back to an introduction to Programming Remaster. Today, we're going to be talking about loops. 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 As you can probably tell by that introduction, a loop in computer science is a statement that allows you to run a set of instructions repeatedly. Loops are one of the foundational types of statements that will be required in almost any program that you write, as they have a variety of uses. As a simple example, imagine you want to print hello 100 times. This sounds like it could be quite annoying to do, requiring 100 separate print statements. Now, copying and pasting print hello 100 times would be a perfectly valid way to handle this, but who really wants to do that? And when that number goes up to say, a thousand, that becomes even more unreasonable than it already is. Instead of doing it that way, you could instead place a print statement inside of a loop that will run 100 times. This would have the exact same effect, that would only require a few lines of code. Now how exactly to write that loop, and what kind of loop will be best, are questions that we will be answering throughout this video, but hopefully that example shows the power of loops. Now, there are four different types of loops that we will be discussing in today's video, and first up is the for loop. A for loop is very useful for situations like the one described above, where you would like to carry out a certain set of instructions multiple times. The syntax of a for loop varies depending on what language you are using. However, in most of them, it consists of three parts, an integer value, a condition for which the loop will continue to run as long as it is met, and an operation to modify the integer value that you initialized. Take this for loop for example. It first declares an integer i and initializes it to 0. It then sets the condition that i must be less than 3. Finally, it sets the operation to i++, which will increment i by 1 each time the loop is run. The instructions inside the for loop tell the computer to print hello. Knowing this, let's go through this for loop and see what it does. To begin, i is set to 0. As 0 is less than 3, the loop will run. Thus, it prints hello. i is then incremented by 1 to 1. As 1 is less than 3, the loop runs again. Next, i is incremented once more to 2 and the instructions in the loop are carried out once more. i is then incremented to 3, which is of course not less than 3, and thus the for loop is complete, and the computer moves on to whatever comes next in the program. This example is quite simple, however you should be able to use it as a blueprint to understand how best to implement for loops in your own program. Now, when you are using a for loop, it is important to ensure that, given the initial value of the integer, and the operation you have set, the condition must eventually evaluate to false, so that you may exit the loop. If the condition always evaluates to true, then you have created an infinite loop, and your program will crash. For example, consider the following for loop. i is declared and initialized to 1. The condition is that i is greater than 0, and the operation is i++. Thus, i can only get bigger. However, in order for the for loop to exit, i would have to be less than or equal to zero, which can never happen. Be sure to avoid situations like this, so that your program can run without crashing. After the for loop is the for each loop. A for each loop is used for iterating through arrays or lists. Essentially, the loop will go through each element in the array and use that element to carry out some instructions. The for each loop terminates after it has run on the final element of the array. This has a variety of uses, for instance summing up the elements of an integer array, using an integer array to create a new array that only contains the element of the first array that are greater than some value, or just printing out each of the elements. Note that if you know the size of the array, then you can loop through the elements of an array with just a for loop, using one similar to the one shown on screen now that just uses the indices of the elements you would like to reference. Next up, we have the while loop. 
A while loop has only one part, a condition, and it continually carries out the instructions within its body so long as the condition is true. Its condition can be a Boolean variable, meaning that the loop will run as long as the variable is true, or if some integer is greater than another integer, or anything else so long as the statement evaluates to either true or false. The interesting thing about while loops is that in contrast to for loops, you do not have to set the condition such that it will eventually return false. It is quite okay, and relatively common, to create an infinite while loop that will run as long as the program is running. Because of the way that computers handle while loops, your program will continue to run just fine, simply repeating the instructions in the while loop over and over again without crashing. An infinite while loop can be created quite simply by writing while true. True will always evaluate the true, and thus the condition is always met. An example of where an infinite while loop may be useful is when you are coding a game. You want to repeatedly loop through your code to check for button presses and update the screen accordingly so long as the game is running. Notice that a while loop, unlike a for loop, does not set an operation when you define it. That means that if, say, you set the condition such that the while loop runs so long as some integer variable counter is less than 10, then you need to be sure to initialize its value before the while loop and set the operation or operations that you want to carry out on counter within the body of the while loop. It should be noted that you can similarly operate on the integer that you declare in the header of the for loop within the for loop's body in most languages, but it is not as necessary as it is in a while loop. Finally, I'd like to cover the do while loop. Do while loops are very similar to while loops. However, they will carry out their instructions at least once, even if the condition is false. After the first iteration of the do while loop, it will continue on as a normal while loop, carrying out its instructions so long as its condition is true. As you can see, loops, and the many different types they come in, can be extremely useful for you to use in your code. They allow you to perform some instructions many times in a row, iterate through arrays and lists, and overall decrease the clutter in your code that would result from trying to perform repeated instructions without loops. That's all for today's episode. Next time we will be looking at errors and how you can fix the many different types that will pop up as you code. If you enjoyed, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the content that we have coming out soon. With all that said, thanks for watching. Today, we're going to be talking about loops. I'm not going to say that five times, so I trust your editing skills to, to loop that one. Oh.